Hi, everyone, and welcome to our panel local action, Global Impact, the role of youth in community building and social change. So hi, I'm Shira Mercado. I will be the moderator for this amazing panel here. As you may or not already know, I am one of the executive directors for the International Youth Conference. I consider myself to be an activist and advocate for climate and social change. Um, so we'll be here with our three amazing panelists. Um, so we have here Wanto Tiwanto. He's a member youth uh, rep of the steering committee at the United Nations Digital Global Communications. We also have uh, Sachin as an uh, International Youth Conference Ambassador. And we have as well Oriana Papadopoulou as a former member youth of the Representative Steering Committee, as well as the United Nations Digital, um, Digital Global Communications and the SEU. And well, for this panel, the session will highlight the transformative power of youth-led community building and social change initiatives. The session will emphasize the need to empower young people to be agents of change in their communities and discuss strategies for building strong and inclusive networks of youth activists. Speakers will share inspiring stories of young people who have led successful campaigns on issues ranging from climate justice to human rights and underscore the importance of creating spaces for youth to collaborate and share their experiences. So ultimately, this session will demonstrate how youth-led initiatives can have a positive impact at the local level, while also contributing to broader social and political change. We invite the audience and all the people all around the world um, that are hearing and watching us at the moment to engage with us. You can always comment in the um, chat box and in the comment section. Um, in any case, we'll be reading you, we'll be highlighting your um, most important comments and participations towards what the speakers have to say. And well, we will have a Q&A section as well at the end of this panel so that you what well all the questions that you may have towards the speakers um, they will be able to answer them accordingly so yes um we will start off with wanto so wanto um how do youth-led initiatives can have a positive impact at the local level while also contributing to broader social and political change. What's the importance in creating spaces for youth to collaborate and share their experiences? I mean, uh, are, are you hearing me? Yes, you're eligible. All right, cool. So um, as you rightly said, my name is Wanto and uh, I serve on the DGC Steering Committee uh, and I'm also on the AFS uh, Youth Advisory Council. Uh, first, I want to, you know, appreciate the organizers, uh, IYC, for putting such an, an incredible event together, uh, focused on shaping youth inclusion globally. So there are, there are a couple of things I want to highlight in line with uh, the questions. I think, first of all, I want to, you know, principally agree with the fact that it is crucial to have youth-led initiative uh, tailored around you know, the sustainable development goals to ensure that we have proactive and very accurate and efficient sources. Um, and I also want to affirm that it's very important that we, you know, we also create spaces for youth to collaborate and share. Um, collaboration could be in tune of different, different kinds of spaces. One, it could be intergenerational collaboration. Uh, it could also be uh, tutored around uh, youth participatory uh, engagement, which could be, you know, supporting youth-led initiative or, you know, building a platform where youth can be able to harness and learn from each other and cultivate that sort of shared space and shared learning. But then also in terms of, of local, local level impact, uh, local level impact is extremely important to create broader social and political change. And, and the reason why I think this is important is because uh, when we lead local initiative, we arrive at a grassroots, at a global space of ensuring a higher 
and efficient impact globally. Now, the sustainable development goals is extremely centered around youth-led initiative from a local perspective. And then the next thing about it also is uh, when we we achieve local initiative by ensuring that we have a participatory spree for young people. Uh, participatory spree is basically focused around you know ensuring that we tap on the leadership skills, improving young people communication ability, and also interpreting the sustainable development goals, especially to people who may not know some of the essential goals that are, are crucial. And also, I think also uh, when young people are provided that platform where we can be able to share local experiences, um, it promotes inclusivity, diversity, and equity. And there's also a broader space and opportunity for young people to actively engage uh, with each other and learn from different spheres of experience. Um, as we look for, as we continue to have this conversation, there are a couple of things that will also lay out in uh, my experience. For example, the United Nations Global Stats on the Participation of Young People in Political Leadership basically state that despite having 1.2 billion age of young people between 15 to 24, uh, we make up 16% of the world population, but are represented in 1.9% um, of world parliaments. And also, uh, there are only 2% of 190 United Nations member states have a national youth-led political party. Uh, this include uh, Bolivia and Tunisia. And there's also youth make up 14%, 15% of parliament respectively. So it shows that crucially decision-making process is actually a barrier to ensuring local actions around the world. And I think as we go through this conversation, I want us to see broader change in the perspective of different narrative, uh, political broader change, uh, social broader change, and also uh, in ensuring that we can also be able to tap on different layers that can ensure that we have that sort of efficient youth participation from a local level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manto. I think that was on point, <laughs> literally. I think it's really important to really go through effective youth participation, what you said about brothership from different aspects and from different points. Um, thank you very much uh, for um, adding to that question and touching some such important points. And we will continue now with Sachin. Um, so Sachin, in what way are young people key towards community building and driving local social change? What youth-led initiatives um, initiative success stories inspire you and that may inspire others that are listening as well. Yeah, thank you, uh, Shurabe. And hello, everyone. Greetings from India and good afternoon. Uh, myself, Sachin, I'm IVC ambassador from India and will be sharing my thoughts here. Thank you so much. Um, so it's a broader thing like community building and uh, doing local social change. We should understand one uh, important aspect of it is like when we think about, uh, you know, community building, it should start from yourself. So right now, let's say we should have to settle down first. Like many people do that. Once they settle down, they have socio, economical, political and cultural capital where they get, uh, you know, uh, support from different networks then they should identify the issues which is impacting the society or local communities there in their area. And once they identify the issues, it can be a contemporary time issues. It can be a generational issues. It can be a, you know, uh, the issue which has been there since long time, but nobody, uh, you know, uh, try to solve it or no, no, tr nobody try to get into it and do it something, uh, you know, uh, to resolve that issue. Then uh, once that we understand, we should uh, also think about the, you know, find a network. And uh, when we say finding a, finding a network, network can be found in different way, like like-minded people, those who want to uh, change, you know, social, social change, they can come together. There can be, a, you know, when we say finding a network, there, is, there, there can be a someone who is doing some human rights activism, uh, in, in terms of law, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, journalism, in terms of in the field of education development and so on. So we should find a network which can help for a community building first 
and then it can also lead to the local social change once that happens once we find a network once we have the uh, group of people there from outside and uh, you know from the community itself then we should start the strengthening the group like with the different activities and there are couple of activities we can found in community itself it's not theoretically done there but it's practically there right so we should understand that ki how we can bring that activities there and which will definitely help to the strengthen the group first and then finally this work for social change can happen once this all these things get done by step by step but there is this issue like many of them start something called social service they want to uh, build a community but you know already communities scattered in many way they have different identities they have different interests they are coming with different cultural background and all that so that that, that will not uh, end with the you know uh, the good positive local social change if you want to do a good social change like we have a great example from history we have example from india that is dr baba saheb ambedkar he settled down first he did education he tried to achieve different degrees he tried to achieve understanding about the society and then he came back to india and then he start something which made it sustainable right so that we should understand then also the if you want to uh, build a community then they should know why they are deprived many people don't know they are deprived they only continue the things by year and year by the generational and generational like uh, in adivasi communities i i had a chance to visit melghat region of maharashtra so i had to ask them ki what happened why you don't send children to the school so they were easily saying that ki no uh, my my generation has done uh, you know uh, no no need to go to school and uh, uh, take education we are happy with our, whatever we are doing but that making a problem they don't know why they are deprived they don't know why they are not going to access these things there right so that should understand they should no and it can be done by social concise concise that i that i feel social concise can be made the people itself from the community the somebody can take charge of that ki they should go to the community and try to build up this narratives there ki why you are deprived what are the issues there you have and then new things can happen also there is important thing we should understand education and development interlinkages wherever Uh, society is develop wherever society have a good educational uh, uh, you know support then it can show the development there so education will be a playing a major part there then you know what if community know what they uh, want to do they will definitely do but if they don't know what to do then they are uh, you know not able to uh, finish the uh, things there with that we also uh, we will just talk about i will just uh, uh, talk about local change will need active participation this will not happen from the you know somebody standing there or a group of people are standing there if you want to change at local level there should be all communities come together there should be a common you know uh, agenda to uh, resolve the issues of local area if someone from uh, marginalized communities if someone from uh, indigenous communities uh, the group of people people coming together and trying to find a justice trying to find a development there but this this can't happen by you know single community there should be all communities should have a common agenda all communities should understand why we need each other right and then that can be a, a good uh, local change initiative can happen people should live behind the prejudices which they have been there like in india there is a caste prejudices there is a you know uh, religion differences there are many prejudices they should live behind that if you want to do some changes in society right and uh, you know those who go to the community from outside uh, they should not impose the ideas on there they should understand them first they should understand what exactly they want at local level 
like we have many researcher those who come from outside we have many activists those who come from outside and go there and impose the ideas which which uh, you know not helping them so much right so yeah uh, so these are the some things i wanted to share about uh, you know this uh, community building and social change it's a long uh, process but we need to understand these things first and then then definitely uh, we can move forward i have some interesting stories from india especially from my region so one of the stories i have uh, his name is bodhi ramteke he did his uh, graduation in law faculty at ils college pune and then he started uh, working in his area only so he came from gadchurli district of maharashtra then he started uh, you know uh, he brought some uh, those adivasis face some fundamental issues he bring that issues in front of uh, you know state human rights commissions and then uh, it got resolved after some time then also uh, you know uh, you you know that like uh, adivasi community uh, face issues of accessing justice but he did some good research and presented at international summer school in egypt and that research paper get uh, you know publish and he did uh, well there so right now he will be doing uh, research at uh, supreme court of india and trying to find uh, ways to help the community and uh, move forward thank you thank you very much uh, sachin uh, those remarks and those points were really important and were really great to hear about uh, you know finding your network and where you will final types of activists um the example that you well or the many examples that you shared with us were surely something we can learn from and be inspired from and how can one as a young person can lead change and change paradigms and traditional habits from their own communities and society those were really good points and in general a really good participation now we will continue with uh rania and um well um for this how can we empower youth all around the world to be agents of change in their world and in their own communities and what are the main strategies for building a strong and inclusive networks for youth activists good afternoon from greece uh, it's an honor to be with you today dear shrap thank you for hosting this panel I am Rania Papadopoulou, a young woman from Greece, a human rights expert and a change uh, passionate. So change, uh, this word characterizes humanity, characterizes a society, characterizes the world, because the world we live in is constantly changing. On the one hand, it keeps evolving, but on the other hand, with each passing day, new challenges arise. It's up to us, the young people, to step up and bring the change that the world needs right now. The youth of today are more connected, more informed, and more empowered than ever before. Social media gives us access to a wealth of information at our fingertips. We can connect with like-minded individuals from around the world, share our ideas and opinions, and mobilize for change like never before. Young people have always been at the forefront of change throughout history. From the civil rights movement to the fight for women's, women's rights, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and recently at the Ukraine war, young people have played a crucial role in driving progress and pushing society forward. Today, we face a number of pressing issues that demand, demand urgent attention. Climate crisis, gender inequality and social injustice are just a few of the challenges that require bold and decisive action. And who better to take on those challenges than us, the young people? We are a generation that refuses to be complacent. We refuse to accept the inequalities and the injustices that have been perpetuated for far too long. We are committed to building a better world, one that is more just, equitable, and sustainable of a, for all. But bringing about change is not easy. It requires persistence, determination, and the willingness to take risks. It requires us to challenge the status quo and be unafraid of speaking truth to power. But most importantly, it requires us 
to work together, to collaborate, and to support each other as we strive uh, towards our common goals. The good news is that young people are already making a difference. From School Fridays for Future to the Black Lives Matter movement, young people have been at the forefront of some of the most important social movements of our time. And due to the virtual connection, we can all participate and stand up for human rights and justice, no matter our region, no matter our time zone. Exactly like we're doing today. I am glad that I had the chance to be a member of the UNDGC Youth Representatives Steering Committee to share common views with other young people from different parts of the world, to support each other, to fight for common goals, to be part of the change our society needs and of course, to equally participate in such an important initiative. Being a woman is not easy. Being a young woman is even harder. And I cannot explain how hard it is to be a young woman who fights for human rights. We need to bring our own chair to the table. We need to prove that we are as capable as men. We need to survive in a society that still judges us by our looks and not our achievements. So as a young woman and as a human rights expert, I will keep fighting for every girl, every woman, for the injustices and the inequalities. I will keep uniting my voice with all the other incredible, incredible young people around the world with you to ensure that everyone is on board, everyone can participate, everyone's voice is heard. Because there's still much work to be done and we must continue pushing forward. We must bring our ideas to the table. We must continue to speak against violence and injustice and to fight for a more inclusive, a more prosperous, a more just future for all. We have no time to lose. So to all the young people out there, I urge you to get involved. Join a local organization or start your own. Educate yourselves, uh, yourselves on the issues that matter to you. And don't be afraid to speak out. Remember, change starts with us. In conclusion, I want to leave you with a quote from the civil rights activist Angela Davis. She, Davis. she said, I'm no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing. I'm changing the things I cannot accept. Let us all be inspired by her words. Let's use our voice. Let's take action, support each other, and never give up. The world needs us, and we have the power to create a brighter future for ourselves and for generations to come. Let us all be the, the change we want to see to the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anya. That was amazing. Um, it was amazing to hear about your work and passion towards women and girls' futures, towards uh, social change. I think it's really important what you said about everyone's voice being heard, for everyone to speak up, uh, you know, joining your local organization or even creating one. Thank you so much for this intervention. It was amazing and great. So um, for this, we will continue and pass on with our Q&A section. So we have some amazing, some really good questions. Um, you know, I'm going to just put the question out there. In any case, anyone here um, from the panelists uh, that wants to answer the question, you can always um, open your mics and start um, answering. And um, if, well, um, if you already answered, but you, well, okay, let's take an example. You want to answer the question, but also Sachin, if you want to answer it, we will have the space for two speakers to answer the question. Okay, um, so the question is from Beda. Beda here, it's appearing on the screen. So a common thing with rural communities is that they are not too keen for change. It is not easy mobilizing or involving them, especially um, when they are, we then don't see any reason for improvement or change. What approach do you think works best in such cases? And I think this is really important regarding vulnerable, vulnerable and rural communities. So anybody that wants to hop um, to this question, you're welcome. Well, can you read the question again? Yes, of course. So um, a common thing with rural communities is that they are not keen for change. It is not easy to involve them or to mobilize them 
especially especially when they don't see any reason for improvement or change. So what do you think, um, what approach do you think works best in such cases? I mean, um, there are so many approaches that could work. The first and the, the, um, and I agree, I echo with the sentiment that it's complicated to get young people in involvement, especially in a broader change narrative. Um, uh, and I will give an example. Uh, even one of one of the main one of the the cardinal way that we excite young people to you know see the name for engaging in broader change is to harness in their participation. Every year at the Youth Assembly, uh, currently set on the AF, AFS Youth Advisory Council, at the Youth Assembly every year you have a chance to meet young people from you know multicultural perspective. Uh, with diverse leadership experience, uh, with uh, with new ideas and innovation, and when <clears throat> when young people in uh, at this event have con meaningful conversation, they are more excited, enthusiastic to go back home and take actions uh, that could lead to a broader change. <clears throat> and so, in in a vein, yeah, in a lens of that entire aspect of how we you know inspire young people to be to, to take actions. Um, the essence of PLA, PLA conversation uh, is a is a cardinal space for inspiring people. And I think also one of those uh, things that we could do is uh, use, usage of technology and social media. We live in a very savvy generation uh, where social media have been, have been used as an important catalyst of change. And so if we can be able to have young people, you know, utilizing their skills and their awareness and their knowledge of social media to uh, speaking about the work that they do, to sharing the work they do, and also connecting other young people to see their work and how they can be involved, that also is another means. But policy is also a very great aspect of it because you can even know the power and influence of policy of, of uh, that generate young people, generate platform for young people to be inclusive. And like I said earlier from my opening uh, statement, when we look at policy in that narrative, we definitely will look at, you know, how can we, you know, create space that not only attract young people uh, attention, but how can we create space that after the barriers that we have to inclusive participation uh, in local change. And that means uh, there could be a political conversation about it, inspiring young people to be engaged in political leadership, uh, inspiring young people to be engaged also in participatory policy decision-making process because uh, it concerns them, and also uh, ensuring that young people can have that easier path to navigate with their ideas and solutions for change. But I'm sure there are other people who will have you know, different means of answering that question too. Thank you so much, Wanto. I think that would be really, that that's vital. I mean, we all know that we are living as social media and tech generation, but it's important that we do not forget about these rural communities generating platforms, as you mentioned, and well, the importance of focusing in inclusiveness and uh, creating spaces for these communities as they are key in local change. And as you also mentioned, inspiring people in policy decision processes and so that they can also face less barriers and less challenges in their lives. Thank you very much, Wanto. I don't know if any other of our panelists wants to answer this question in their own experience and perspective. If you want to go, you can open your mics. I think we lost the session. Um, Rania, um, I think we, you can go or we can continue with the next question. We can continue with the next question. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. So the next question um, talks about, well, this question is from Musa Kone. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your names well. But um, this person is asking what are the key factors uh, responsible for the lack of youth participation and development. Just paraphrasing, paraphrasing a little bit the question. Um, I think this question is more towards the challenges that uh, youth face 
towards their participation and their community's development, um, the development of the places they're living. And well, um, obviously adding my input in this question, not only regarding what challenges do you do you know exist and what are the more the most pressing problems and barriers that you face, but also what key solutions do you see as well? So you're welcome. Can I go? Yes, of course, of course. Um, so I believe that uh, one of the biggest challenges that uh, young people face is um, an invisible, let's say, war of ages. Um, we um, get trapped to the idea that, uh, and not only we, the, the older uh, generations as well, we get trapped to the idea that um, we have a, something, we don't have common uh, points. Uh, the older generations uh, are wiser or uh, have more experience or they are better at taking decisions uh, about us, about uh, the future of society, etc. Um, and they believe that we lack of all these uh, skills and uh, the, um, we are not ready yet to stand uh, up and uh, decide for the world. Um, some people believe all these uh, ideas. So I think that um, what we first have to uh, clarify and define is that we are not having a war. We are having a war on uh, for human rights. We are having a war for uh, against injustice, against uh, inequalities. And at this war, we need to be united. We we need to be all together, no matter our age, um, no matter our, our gender, no matter uh, our region. Um, so I think that one of the biggest challenges is this: uh, the idea that. Uh, some people believe that yes, we are not yet, uh, we're not ready yet to participate actively. While uh, older people, some older people believe that yes, the younger ones are not ready. So no, we are ready, no matter our age. And I think that this can be uh, solved also by uh, empowering children to actively participate, to stand up for their rights, because if um, the whole society changes its view uh, on the age issue uh, step by step, then in the near future, um, there, will, there, will, there will not be, uh, there won't be any um, differences uh, among our ages, according to our ages. I think this is the, the, the most uh, important challenge. With this crucial challenge. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rania. And well, um, just to take advantage of this panel's time, in the meanwhile, I communicate and um, see if Sashin has any network problems. I think that's really important and key as well the connection barriers and um, the tech. Problems that we may face are important as well, but we will continue with one two um, answering the question regarding what are the key challenges that you uh, may face, what are the barriers, the problems, and if you could also mention any solutions or um, yeah any shared experiences that you want to um, talk about as well regarding the challenge and the solution. So um, I think. <clears throat> Um, there are just a few things I'll definitely add uh, to uh, what Rania uh, spoke about, and I'm uh, very confident that she um, addressed a lot of those things. There are a couple of things that we'll just add. One is uh, there is, of course, uh, barriers to opportunities, and uh, this has been proven by a lot of studies around the world that young people face extreme challenges to uh, getting the kind of opportunities that they will need to succeed in their initiative and their solutions to change. Uh, one of those studies is the economic, uh, World Economic Forum um, highlighted that young people face a uh, lack of access to opportunity in leadership uh, and engagement. Uh, 
<clears throat> and I think this is very important for the sustainable development goals because if we don't have, you know, the women population um, of, you know, the women uh, uh, existence of population participating in those kind of spheres, uh, we will not have the kind of efficiency we need for the SDGs. Uh, there's also lack of support. I think Rania spoke about that as well. Uh, there are many instances where we have conversation with young people around the world where they, you know, stress the name of being supported, you know, by their peers or their non-peers or even within their 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 geographical space. <clears throat> and this is on a this this could come from so many media. It could come from um, you know, just access or support in terms of capacity building program that could, you know, inspire them to be ready for the change that they intend to lead. Um, it could also come from, um, you know, like I spoke earlier about the impact of policies uh, and laws that sort of, you know, legitimize platform for young people participation. Uh, there's also uh, a study on that by the UN involved. Uh, I think uh, this was one of the, the earlier study that spoke about the, the lack of support of young people, and that was like in 2018 where uh, young people from around the world who surveyed and at last they asked the, the essence of difficulty in navigating in leadership positions. Uh, we all know financial barriers also is another thing that we could talk about. Uh, a lot of young people may not have the access to financial opportunity that could help support their initiative to grant and sponsorship and so forth. Um, um, in numerous cases, I think this year, the UN, uh, the UN Envoy solutions um, for youth and youth engagement basically highlighted the essence of young people having you know pathway to UN funding that could support their initiative. And I think this is very crucial in different countries around the world, uh, where young people can have you know that sort of minimized bureaucracy uh, to you know access international financial market and funding. And there could be so many, like I said. Um, I would just end on the notes because you asked about what could be done. And I think we definitely cannot stop advocating for better better and fair and balanced uh, as platform that sort of utilize the ideas and enthusiasm of young people around the world. And if we must be able to achieve that, we have to tackle all of those issues individually. Uh, we have to see the lack of representations the lack of access as a critical issues to have other critical barriers to having youth inclusion in local actions. And I think once we can be able to see those things as a threat, and then we can be able to, you know, use the solutions that are around uh, to achieve uh, efficient changes. Thank you very much, Wanto. Um, I think that's really important. You mentioned, I think everything, well, Rania and you, mentioned most of the most important and pressing issues that youth is facing right now, including barriers to opportunities, lack of support. Um, you mentioned something really crucial and something that we may not focus on most of the times, but it's something that most of the times it's uh, the biggest barrier, which is funding, uh, something fundamental, access to funding, uh, also access to opportunities and the correct platforms for youth to advocate and to raise their voices and to be really present in important dis discussions and to be represented as well. But yes, I will give the word to Sachin as well. Um, so Sachin, um, we were talking about the key challenges that youth are facing all around the world right now. And well, with your perspective and in your experience, what do you see, um, what do you think are the main issues and the main barriers that you face and some of the solutions that you have also experienced from, from these um, challenges? Yeah, um, I can see the, uh, there are many uh, challenges faced by youth these days, especially, uh, you know, uh, especially in terms of rural areas youth, they don't, uh, uh, have the you know opportunities to do many things uh, you know on the ground they have lesser opportunity already they have uh, you know uh, the development in that area is very less so they get stuck into uh, different things easily it it can it it, it is uh, it can be related to social media it can be related to with uh, you know uh, it's like uh, 
uh, engaging uh, with uh, different things which is not matter to the communities these are the some challenges especially uh, can you hear me yes we can hear you all good all good okay it shows freeze so yeah hello yes uh sashin can you hear us yeah yeah Um, Sachin, are you, are you there? I think he's his screen. Yeah. So here he has some connection issues. Um, but well, we will continue uh, with the panel. There are also other questions that we're seeing here. We remind um, the audience here that if you have some other questions you are free to put them in the chat we have some time left for you um but just okay so actually regarding the time we can pass on with the because of the time that we have left there is little time now the floor will be open for the final remarks at the moment from each panelist um, reminding you that you will have between three to five minutes to send the final message to the audience that are listening to all the people around the world. You know, um, reminding that this panel was about the role of youth in community building and social change. So I think this is the important. This is the the time in which it's um, key and vital to really remind everyone here. Um, about and motivate and inspire everyone here about acting in their own communities. So the floor will be opened um, for you to send this final message and have your final remarks. For starters, we will uh, I will pass the the microphone and the word to Wanto if you want to um, finalize your participation. Uh, yeah, sure. So again, since um. Like I said previously, I want to appreciate the organizer for you know, creating this space and platform to have such a very really great conversation. Um, the UN Sustainable Development Goals speak hugely to the essence of localizing action for you know more efficient and inclusive you know, in, uh, 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 workings of the SDG target goal. And uh, this can only be done with us young people. We have the we have the, the broader platform to that can be a guideline to necessitate the changes that we want in our community. And so to all, all everyone watching this in different media and platform, uh, I want us to realize that we have the potential to create any change in the world. We have, you know, not just the potential, but we have every single tool that is needed to be able to lead uh the first thing we should recognize is the power of our voice uh we should never speaking up we should never start speaking up against um the things that we believe in um our ideology our views and morals and our solution for for change another aspect also is um i, I do believe that empowerment of young people is crucial and a critical space to achieve uh, the sustainable development goals. So one of those things that we need to do is uh, we have to be able to, you know, ensure that they have the knowledge and skills uh, to become agents of change in their community. And then also uh, this can only be done through education and training, through mentoring, and through provision opportunities that I highlighted before in my opening statement. And then I also believe that when young people are empowered for local action in the SDGs, uh, we are not just investing in just um, a solution, but we are investing in future prospect for our world, uh, future prospect to combat climate actions, future prospect to eliminate racial inequality, future prospect to create more inclusive youth political participation, uh, future prospect 
uh, to have young people, you know, realizing their roles and their parameter for engaging in, you know, uh, different layers of change around our world. And then uh, finally, also, uh, I think meaningful conversation is, is another, you know, powerful means of, of achieving this objective. Uh, because through conversation as such, young people are uh, provided a space and platform to ask needed questions, uh, to make you know very needed inquiries about how they can navigate their way uh, to you know bringing out their ideas for change. And so I'm gonna stop here for the moment. Again, I want to appreciate the organizer RYC and also. Um, um, all of the panelists as well as you, um, the moderator, for ensuring that we can be able to have this very important conversation, especially um, at this point in time where it's extremely lit and stuff. So thank you. Thank you so much, Wanto. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you here in these panels and to have you here at the International Youth Conference. Uh, your participation here and your inputs, share experiences and perspective is really important, really appreciated. Um, and well, uh, we will continue now with Sachin uh, so that you can keep on with your answer regarding the last question as you, as you were cut out um, and with your final remarks. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so sorry that there is there was a big glitch from my side. So yeah, uh, yeah. I was saying that uh, especially youth should understand uh, what they are exactly want to do. Right? Means uh, there are many people who those who try to driven them in a different way. Uh, like in uh, I am also coming from a rural background. So when I was in my village, the thing was very uh, not good as at all. Like I was also driven with the something uh, which is happening in the village. I was driven with the, some uh, particular ideologies there. I didn't had a chance to read something. I didn't had chance to explore something. But when I uh, went to the you know uh, city Aurangabad city, uh, that time it uh, my life got changed. I think that that is more important for youth also. Like youth, especially in rural area, they should understand what is the aim of their life other than doing something at village, other than doing something with group of people in the village only. They should understand, they should come out, they should find the, uh, you know, interest areas. Like my interest area is understanding sociology or somebody's interest area is in doing something in music. Somebody's, uh, you know, uh, interest areas lies in, you know, development, the community. But they should strengthen themselves first and then come back to the grounds, come back to the roots and try and find the solutions and work for the betterment of society there. I know that will be a very difficult part there. But uh, I think youth is the, you know, it's a very um, uh, important uh, aspect of any community. If youth get stronger and stronger day by day, then community also build up, you know, better way, right? And uh, yeah, I would like to thank you, uh, International Youth Conference and uh, all the organizers, uh, you know, uh, to calling me back here again. And uh, I just wanted to uh, recite a uh, quote by Lao Tse. Uh, you know, I will just uh, um, uh, read that and end my remarks. So Lao Tse said, uh, you know, go to the people, live with them learn from them, love them, start with what they know, build with what they have, but with the best leaders, when the work is done, the task is accomplished, the people will say, we have done this ourselves. Yeah, thank you so much once again, and thank you so much, uh, all the panelists also. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sachin, for sharing that amazing quote and for sharing your perspectives, comments uh, from India. Uh, I mean, uh, representing the Global South is really important uh, here. We have actually from the audience many persons and many people from Asia and from Africa mostly. So we are really happy to have their participation and have their inputs as well here. Um, obviously, it's such a pleasure to have you as well here in the panel and here in this such important discussion. So. 
Um, I will now give the word to Rania. Uh, Rania, you will have the floor to give your final remarks as well. So, <clears throat> thank you. Um, life is short, okay? And uh, during our limited uh, time on um, this planet, on Earth, it is our duty to ensure that uh, we will live a better, uh, a sustainable and inclusive future to the next generations. Uh, we have faced and we are still facing um, tremendous crises uh, in the recent years. Health crisis, climate crisis, energy crisis, rule of law crisis, human rights uh, crisis, and the list goes on and on. Um, the answer to this crisis is simple. Young people, we, need to stand up and um, not only demand social change, but work for it. Um, to, do, to, to, do, to do this, we uh, need to improve our communities, eliminate uh, the bad habits of the past, like corruption, clientelism, and so on, and ensure that no one is left behind. So my message to every young person who uh, watches us uh, today is make your voice heard, uh, inspire other people, support each other, cooperate with older and younger uh, individuals, never give up, and be the change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rania. Cooperation and collaboration, you mentioned it so, so well. Um, really such a great participation, so I cannot say anything more. Um, and well, thanking you a lot for being here for your moments, uh, taking a little bit of your time here in this moment. I know that uh, for some of you, uh, well, for everybody of you, um, it's late night right now. So we really appreciate you uh, being here in this space. Um, for now, we will end this panel right now. We'll end the broadcast. We thank you a lot and also our amazing audience here listening now. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much and we will see you in the next panel.